Hi everyone, my name is Emma Carmen and we are back for another episode of Conversations with Coaches. I will be doing episodes once or twice a day with coaches throughout the NCATA. First up today is Emily Powers from Belmont Abbey. Emily was named the head coach back in January of 2018 and she came to the Abbey from West Liberty University where she was served as a graduate assistant coach since May of 2017 year ladder winner in acrobatics and tumbling at King, earning team MVP honors as a senior in the Hardest Worker Award in 2015 and 2016. She was the winner of the NCATA's Louise Goodrum Academic Achievement Award, which is awarded for the highest GPA among juniors and seniors within the NCATA. And she was a member of the All ECAC and All ECAC academic teams in 2017. And she is from Rome, Georgia, and earned a bachelor's degree in business with a sports management track. Thank you so much for joining me today, Emily. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. So we're going to start off a little bit about Belmont Abbey, about where you guys are located and what division you compete in. Yeah, so Belmont Abbey College is a Division II institution. Um, we compete within Conference Carolinas. Um, we're super excited about this upcoming year um, because it'll be our first conference championship this upcoming season. Um, but other than that, we're located in Belmont, North Carolina, um, which is a smaller town. It has a small community vibe. Um, the downtown has little coffee shops, boutiques, restaurants, pubs, um, and then you're only 10 miles outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. So you kind of get the best of both worlds where you have the small town, but then you're right next to a big city. Um, I think another great thing is that we are only six exits from the Charlotte airport. Um, so literally, we're on exit 26 right off the exit, and then the airport is um, exit 32 also right off the exit. Um, so super close to an airport, and I think that's why we get a lot of students coming from out of state as well. So throughout your past two years there, what have you experienced as some of your team's strengths? Yeah, so our strengths um, team-wise are our foundation and our culture. Um, so that's something that we've tried to work on in the past two years to create a culture where everyone is supported, everyone is accepted. You're all coming from different parts of the country. You're all coming from um, different athletic backgrounds, and you're all coming together in this one sport. You're supporting each other on and off the mat, um, and that's something that has really grown in this past year is that family culture of the team. Um, and it's one of our strengths, and I'm one of those coaches that my philosophy is if your character is right, if um, the culture is right, then the winning will come, um, and I believe that you can't, you can't win without having that culture, without working on your character and yourself first, um, so that is one of our strengths that while we're building, that's what we've been working towards and working on, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, athletically, um, this past season of competition, although we only got to compete twice, um, our highest scoring event was pyramid events. So um, we have some strong hand-in-hand -hand handstand pyramids um, that we didn't have in the previous year. And so that's one of our strengths um, in a meet. So what are some of the highlights you've experienced as a head coach? Obviously, you're a head coach at Belmont Abbey, but you were a grad assistant at West Liberty. So what are some of the highlights that you've had through those three years? Um, well, I think being a part of a first year program. Um, so I was part of the first year program at King. I was part of the first year program at West Liberty. And then I was part of the first year program at Belmont Abbey. Um, there's something so special about those years um, and that the team realizes that you're doing so much more than just playing a sport. You're making history. You're being the first. Um, those are some of the best experiences ever. Um, the first meet in Belmont Abbey history was one that um, was so awesome and so amazing to experience. And coming into this season, our first meet of this season um, was actually our first college win. Um, and to see the stands packed out and people supporting our team um, was, it's just an awesome feeling to have that support from the other sports teams and the other students and the other faculty at campus. Um, but that's definitely been one of the highlights. So how did you get involved with acrobatics and tumbling? Obviously, a lot of first years, as you said. Just how did you find out about it and then pursue a career at King? Yeah, so I grew up doing um, competitive cheer, and I loved the athletic side of the sport, and I loved to tumble, and I loved to stunt. 
Um, and I actually saw a meet at a college in my hometown um, my senior year. And I went to the meet and I had no idea what I was watching at first. But then I start watching it and I'm like, I want to do this. This looks awesome. This is the aspects of my sport that I love. And I want to continue to do that. And all of my friends were sitting behind me and they're like, you need to do that. This is you. Like this describes you. So um, from there, I started filling out some um, recruiting questionnaires at different colleges. At that point, there were, I think, five new colleges that were adding and I had no idea about them. Um, but then some of the coaches started to reach out and I went through the recruiting process and, um, found my home at King. So, um, that's how, that's how I got started in the sport. And then I fell in love with it from there and obviously continued with it and wanted to coach. Going off of that, what kind of opportunities does this sport have? Obviously it gives a lot of opportunities for a woman to compete in a collegiate sport and then go on to a career. But can you just expand a little bit upon that? Yeah, so it's it's crazy because almost everyone that you come into contact to says, I had no idea that this sport was a sport um, until I was in high school and I got recruited for it, and then I fell in love with it. Um, it's exciting to do a new sport. Um, there's so many opportunities. We have so many different colleges in the country um, that are all looking for different skill sets, so there's always a home for somebody. Um, and some people will come into the recruiting process and they'll be like, I don't know if this is for me. This seems really intense. This seems um, really hard. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. Um, you just have to develop into it. Nobody has done acrobatics and tumbling like us um, below the college level. So when you come in, we're going to build those drills up to the skills. Um, and it's fine that you've never thrown someone in the air while they're flipping and twisting and catching them. We're going to teach you that once you get here. So it can look intimidating at, at first from a recruiting standpoint. Um, but I promise we're going to help you out. and We're going to teach you those skills as you go. Um, so your background already, already helps you develop into those skills. Um, and then from that, for me, I always knew that I wanted to coach, but um, when I went into college, I thought I wanted to own my own gym, you know? I thought I wanted to be a cheerleading coach. I thought that that was my future. Um, and then going through the sport, I was like, this is awesome that we get this experience um, and we can, we can coach. And literally, you can be a head coach by the time that you're 23, whereas if you're a basketball coach, that's going to take, you know, 10 plus years to do. Um, but for us, since we're so new, um, you get that opportunity right out of the gate. And that's that's awesome that we get that. Great. Thank you so much, Emily. And thank you to everyone for tuning into this episode of Conversations with Coaches. Up next, later on this afternoon, we will have Sarah Koenig at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Emma Carmen, And if you weren't able to tune in live to this episode, this will be on all our social media at Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, or you can go back and watch this on Instagram TV. Thank you so much again, Emily. Have a great day. You too. See ya.